Hi, and welcome to another one of my Classic Clicks guitar lessons. This one covers some of the playing of Otis Rush, one of the West Side guitar players in Chicago during the 50s and 60s. And I'm going to show you some of the licks and ideas that I've taken from Otis Rush's playing that you might find interesting and might want to use yourself. I'm going to start out with something that I played during the introduction. I call them scrapes. And you hear Otis do this in a lot of, a lot of his songs. Raking is another term for this. And in the intro, I played a tune or part of a tune in F sharp. And it's from a song called It Takes Time. And in that song, Otis does something like this. Sound. All he's doing, the tune is an F sharp, and with his right hand or left hand, he's barring the top three strings, first, second, and third string at the second fret. It's basically an F sharp minor. And then he's picking it by just raking the strings from, from the bot from down, downward and upwards, going upward with that. And while he does that, he's muting the strings with his right hand palm, or you can do it by just letting up on the strings with your left hand. And you get that raking minor sound. Then the whole rhythm, what he's doing is going to the rest of the F sharp minor chord. If I take my ring finger and put it on the fourth fret of the fourth string, that's an F sharp minor. So he's going going back and forth between the 4th fret and the 2nd fret on that 4th string. So the rake and the bass. And then the double stop lick that he plays over the 1. We've seen this before. My 1st finger on the 2nd fret, 2nd and 3rd strings. And I'm hammering down with my 2nd finger onto the 3rd string at the 3rd fret. But I'm hitting both the 2nd and the 3rd strings. So you get that double string sound. Then I'm using my ring finger and getting the double stop on the 4th fret, 2nd and 3rd strings. And then back to this position. So the whole lick. Put it all together. over the one chord. Now when he goes to the two, he, he does this different ways in different songs. One way that I like, which is the one I'll show you, is when he goes to the four, gets the bass note, which is the B at the fifth fret, or the second fret of the fifth string, and then plays the B chord by bouncing with the second, first finger barring the middle, or the second, third, and fourth strings. Actually, it's really the second and third string. And then he goes down to the 4th fret doing the same thing, and back. So again, that's really just a B, 2nd position bar chord. He's going from the 2nd fret to the 4th fret and back. And back to the 1. Then, to the 5. Gets your D, D flat and does the same thing with the D flat chord. So the whole thing and walks it back up. Then at the turnaround, he just repeats this lick and the D flat seven. So you take a C seven. That's a D flat seven. He uses this, Otis Rush uses that chord a lot as, in his turnarounds. So, that little. It's one of my favorite Otis Rush type licks, and you can use that, that whole thing I just played, that whole pattern as a solo, or you can use that scrape at any 
point as a fill or whatever you want to do with it. It's very, very versatile. Sounds cool. Something else that I, I've taken away from Otis Rush's playing are some of his fills. And he's an incredible singer. That's one of the, maybe what I like the most. And, and unlike some of the other great blues guitar players, when you hear Otis Rush, the guitar really complements the singing, I think, more than any other player. Just the bends and the little riffs that he plays just goes perfectly with what he's singing. So I'm going to show you a couple different Otis Rush fills that I've picked up on. One comes from a tune called Double Trouble, which is played in D minor. And during this tune, he sings a verse, and then he, he does these fills with these bends, like this. And that is just a very simple thing. I've got my first finger on the 10th fret of the first string. Then I'm using my ring finger on the 12th fret of the second string, and my pinky on the 13th fret of the second string. And I'm bending up and holding the holding my first finger solid. And then I'm going back and forth between the 10th and 13th frets on the first string. And he does those kinds of fills in between the, the vocal verses. So he'll be singing something like that. Sometimes he'll bend which is something we'll get into here in just a little bit, but that just that little fill. <laughs> Very simple, but it sounds great. That's something. Something a little more complicated comes from a tune called I Can't Quit You Baby. And this is a masterpiece in, in electric blues and also in, in filling with the lead guitar. It's in A, and he does this one fill That I really like. So he, he's singing and then he throws in this behind him. What I'm doing is in the key of A, starting on the 12th fret of the first string, I'm going to the 10th fret of the first string and the 13th fret of the second string to the 10th fret of the 2nd string. And I'm picking it quickly with my right hand, and I'm also muting with my right hand palm just a little bit. So he'll sing of the verse. And then throw that in. I like that a lot. That's a cool type of lick. Another thing that Otis Rush does, in terms of the fills, is from a song called You Know My Love. And this is a song in A minor. Really cool rhythm pattern to it. But in that song, there's a fill that he does that I, I really like a lot. It sounds like this. And that this part... Is what I, I like and it's a it's a great little riff that you can use as a fill or even as part of a solo. So here's in the key of A, the song is an A minor, and I'm going down to my second blues box and what I'm doing is I've got my first finger on the seventh, eighth fret and I'm borrowing both the first and second strings. And then I'm hammering on with my ring finger to the 10th fret of the 2nd string, and then coming off on the 8th fret of the 1st string. This is a position Buddy Guy used a lot on, on his early recordings. He'd do stuff like this, where he's hammering on double stops onto the 10th fret of the 2nd string. But in this one, Otis Rush just goes... That's the first part of the riff. And then he does a double stop here. Where this is a typical electric blues thing. 
where he's sliding. He's got his first finger on the seventh fret of the second string and his second finger on the eighth fret. So he's going like that. And then he winds up up here in the first position blues box. Play lots of different stuff there, but it's that first part. Something like that that I really like. It's pretty simple. Now all those licks that I just showed you, those fills, you can transpose, put them in other keys very easily. So that first one I showed you, if you're playing an A, something like that. If you're playing in D, you can take that one that I just showed you, that uh, play it all the way down there in D. You could also play this in D. So those are licks that you can use in a number of keys, a number of different ways. Another real cool Otis Rush type lick or fill is something he does in minor keys, a tune called Double Trouble and also in his most famous tune, um, All Your Lovin'. And he does this thing with a minor chord. So let's say we're playing in D minor. All right, so let's make it in G minor. And if you go down to the second position bar chord and do the minor shape, so this is a three, three string minor chord, three finger minor chord, my first finger. This is my G first position bar chord. This is my G second position bar chord. And I'm playing a minor. I could play it like this, but he's just using the three fingers, no bar. First finger on the 10th fret, first string, second finger on the 11th fret of the 2nd string, and 3rd finger on the 12th fret of the 3rd string. So he's got this minor thing. So while he's playing, maybe up here... You just let that ring out. He does this in Double Trouble, where he's playing in D. He goes all the way down on the neck, down to the... Oh, 17th fret where he starts it at the first string. He just lets that ring out as a fill. Very haunting. So he could be playing. <laughs> and that's the minor key is really neat. And Otis Rush was a master of playing tunes in that minor key and just sounding so mournful and soulful. Magic Sam too. Now another way he uses that same three-fingered minor chord, a tune called All Your Lovin'. He's playing an F sharp. And then down here, he plays it as a single string type thing to kick off his solo. And he does this. And he takes that minor chord all the way up here to a B minor. solo verse just out of that three three note minor chord thing which is really kind of cool so another Phil idea from Otis Rush is uh, his bends and his bends are ferocious and I've read that he was able to bend so deeply and so far because the way his guitar was set up was he was bending down instead of bending up like most of us are going to do in the key of G, or let's actually go to the key of A, he had a fill that he used quite a bit. It goes like this. Something like that. So he'll sing. And he'll play that in there. But the band that I call these long bands is very simple. I'm on the A, first position bar chord. So for my bend, I'm going to go from the fifth fret with my first finger on the second string, and then put one finger on each fret down to the eighth fret, and then just bend everything up. It's far. 
to get the sound that you want. Now that first part of the lick, what I'm doing is starting with my first finger on the fifth fret of the second string, my second and third and second and third fingers on the four, sixth and seventh frets of the third string. And then I'm bending bending the third string and then getting that note, fifth fret of the second string. And then I'm getting the first string at the fifth fret too. And then I go to my long bend. And then that next bend is on the third string. I've got my first finger on the fifth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret with my second and third on the third string and bending. Typical Otis Rush type thing, those bends. And he did that a lot in between his vocal verses when he's singing. He uses these bends as fills. You might do something like that, add that at the end. And you can do that in any key. It gets tougher as you go down the neck, but right in A. Songs like I Can't Quit You Baby and, and Grown in the Blues and others, he uses that. Or he might do the same bend again. Something like that. But that's another type of fill that I get from listening to Otis Rush's playing. You can go in any key and see. So those are typical Otis Rush type things, those really soulful bends. Those are all fills. And in the next part of the, the video, I'm going to show you just some lead ideas that I've picked up from his playing.